podcast. So we're here at uh, the GA Precision Range. And what town is this, Matt? Uh, we're close to uh, Lone Jack, Missouri. Lone Jack, Missouri. Okay, so we're not hunting, fishing, or eating. <laughs> so one of the Jesses, would you guys like to uh, tell us what we're doing here today? Well, hi, I'm Jess. Uh, I am the vice president for Wilderness. Uh, we're out here having a handgun event, an intro to handgun for some women. We had some uh, about 10 ladies show up today, and it was just kind of to expose them to firearms, get them comfortable, uh, get the safety basics down, and it was it turned out really great. Awesome. Awesome. Let's go around the room real quick um, before we get too far into this. Introduce everybody. So I'll go to my left. Go hey. ahead and say the name. Yep. Uh, Laura Kavork. I am the marketing manager for Norma Ammunition. Um, I do public relations for them and just different marketing things. Awesome. Jessica Rice. I'm president and founder of Wilderness. Again, I'm Jessica Baines. I'm the vice president. And then uh, Matt Rice, uh, Jessica's husband, and I'm the uh, senior manager of media relations uh, for our Hunt Shoot accessories and tactical brands uh, under Vista Outdoor, which I know is a mouthful, but there are a lot of brands, so hence a, a long introduction. It's probably a big, like, card you have. Your business card <laughs> it's is, not like, a long. bigger card. It's an but eight and a half by 11. Yeah. 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 Too many logos on it to uh, understand who's who. But no, uh, great to be involved in this event and have uh, not only CZ and Norma out here presenting, but uh, also some of the brands uh, in our world. It's a great event. A lot of great feedback. Absolutely. I think it was a really cool event. Um, you know, we're, uh, Matt, Laura, and I are all in the industry. And so, you know, Laura with Norma, Matt with Vista Outdoors, which covers what, what a couple of the brands, Bushnell. So RCBS. Bushnell, Hoppies, RCBS, Champion, Blackhawk, Uncle Mike's. You said a few. I guess I could keep on going. But no, that's yeah, those are the two big are, names. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people know that stuff. So um, I thought it was kind of interesting because we um, work with some women that don't shoot a lot or two of them had never shot before, right? Yeah, I think we had two ladies that uh, pretty much when we asked the question in the beginning, uh, they were at a, a ground level of zero. Uh, we had four or five that would have probably rated themselves about midway, and then one person who was a little bit more advanced. So uh, a good mix uh, of novice and a little bit more um, experienced alike. Absolutely. No, I, I thought it was a really good mix. And um, Jess, you were talking about the attitude, everybody? Mm -hmm. We kind of go and talk about that a little bit. Well, I think um, the attitudes of, of the people who come to the events can make or break an event. Everybody came in with a can-do attitude. The anxiety was actually really low. And I know with firearms, especially with two people who've never shot before, it's a very anxiety-driven thing to pick up a firearm. And everybody came and asked some amazing questions. We had a lot of debate, a lot of discussions. We talked calibers. And I think a lot of the attendees walked away with information that they might not have got elsewhere just because we had such a fun group and there was a lot of dialogue. Absolutely. And one of the one of the gals that had never shot before made the comment after the class was over that, you know, we had her hooked. She can't wait to join us on future events. She's ready to go out and purchase her own gun. And and I think that that's really kind of a testament to the, you know, the instruction and the way the, the class itself was pulled off. You know, there was a very welcoming atmosphere. So she didn't feel intimidated from the get go, which I think is a really important um, thing that you really have to kind of concentrate on when you do offer these events because it is so easily uh, easy to get intimidated with something uh, you know that you've never done before. Yeah, especially I think too um, in a male-dominated world, which is shooting, mm -hmm. um, it's still male-dominated, um, and so I think a lot of times uh, women's introduction to shooting maybe through their husband or boyfriend, or they go to the range and the guys are jerked behind the counter. I talked about that a little bit today. Um, but I, I know Matt tried to really set the stage, and uh, we tried to really welcoming and opening. And, you know, there's no stupid questions. Like, let's, let's have some fun. It's really patient. Yeah. And um, luckily, we have Laura here helping us teach today. So, Laura, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. But okay. But you want to talk about that kind of aspect of it. You're kind of in a different boat than the rest of these women because you're in this industry. So, I think I have a different perspective, too, because I, I mean, kind of like you said, it is a male-dominated industry. There's definitely um, some intimidation factor, you know, when I go up to – a shooting counter range, even though I've been in this industry for six or seven years, I've shot for 10 or 12 at this point, and I know what I'm talking about. There is a different factor kind of um, going up, especially if you're like some of these women who have never picked up a gun, don't even know the questions to ask. Um, and so I think it was just such a great environment to be able to bring them all together and, you know, have a very open dialogue. Um, I definitely think, and I've gone to pistol courses with all the guys, I've been one of the guys, I've been to pistol courses with all the women. Um, there's definitely a different atmosphere, and I don't know if intimidation factor, I mean, there is an intimidation factor when you're there with a bunch of shooters you don't know, or things like that, but um, it just, it's very, very encouraging. Everyone's kind of their own cheerleader, too, and, and it was great to see the girls 
cheering after, you know, someone hit steel. I couldn't believe some of the women who said, I've never shot a gun before. I was like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. You're hitting steel silhouette targets at 15 yards like a pro by the end of the class. And to see that confidence was just incredible. Absolutely. No, I love that too. And um, a little bit of background on the event. So I brought eight or nine different guns from Seize USA, a couple of different pistols or our striker fire P10 series, the PO7, PO9, like polymer double action, single action guns, and our Shadow Twos and some other compacts. And one thing that was cool to me was um, I personally gravitate towards our striker fire line. Um, I, that's what I carry the most of. That's what I like to shoot. I think it's easier to shoot. But some of them, they're gravitating, toward, gravitating towards the bigger guns, you know, the double action, single action guns, which I thought was kind of cool. So, um, and some of them we had on our P10 series, we had some red dots on there. Yeah, we did. So Bushnell's coming out with a new line of red dots, which, uh, depending on when you're hearing this, could already be out right now. But uh, we've got two new models, uh, an RXS 250 and a 100. But these dots have really been designed to focus in on that kind of personal protection, concealed carry law enforcement market. It's not a competition dot, so it doesn't give you that big reflex window. It's a slightly larger MOA and a dot, you know, multiple brightness settings. But, you know, as we experience today, red dots are, are a wonderful training tool. Um, they allow somebody who's having a hard time perhaps lining up the iron sights or if there's only a, let's say, a front fluorescent and blacked out rears. If you haven't seen that sight and before, it can be a little harder to uh, pick up. So a red dot's a good training tool because it simplifies that process and uh, it gets that, builds that confidence because you're a first time shooter. I think the most important thing is to get confidence. And once you do that, then, then no matter what gun you're using or what target array you're looking at, you're going to be much more, you know, comfortable and, and probably have a lot more fun because you've got a, a base to build off of. So it was great to have the red dots. They they fit great on the CZs. I'm sure you'll be hopefully seeing a lot of that in, in the future. Those two uh, companies paired up together and some nice ammunition. So, uh, yeah, all the way around, we had a lot of uh, variety. So ladies could pick from, you know, the striker fired, as you mentioned. Uh, it's more of a stainless steel or a heavier gun. So I think variety is also key for these events is, is don't try to pigeonhole everybody into shooting that one gun. Yeah. Let them kind of pick and choose. As, that was a, a lot of topic today was uh, finding what fits best for you. And then uh, there's a lot of good choices out there. So it, you need to try them all. 100%. You know, and that's one thing I was going to kind of talk about here for a little bit. So... We had a lot of questions, a lot of first-time shooters here. You know, they're all, they, not a lot of them shot a lot. I think one woman was pretty confident on some guns, but um, we had a lot of questions from what caliber do you carry? Um, you know, what caliber is good? Do I have to carry a 9mm? Do I have to carry a 45? Um, to what kind of holster do I use? How should I carry it? Um, let's talk about that for a little bit. So we, we all three of us had answers for that, I think. Um, but Laura, talk about what what your thoughts were on that or how you kind of approach that? So I think some of the questions I really liked today was kind of, you said caliber, because obviously I'm on the ammunition side of the house. Um, and so I think some of the ladies had always been told, you've got to shoot nine mil, you've got to shoot 45, you've got to shoot whatever. Well, there's so many different considerations from whether it's, you know, a male mentor that's giving it to you or, or someone at the gun counter giving it to you, you know, you got to shoot what you can hit well with first and then there's also so many considerations we were kind of talking about. Um, most of the pistols today weren't necessarily the size for concealed carry, which it's obviously a basic pistol course today. So we weren't do focusing so much on that or drawing from holsters or anything. But um, I think it was really interesting to dialogue with the ladies and just kind of give insight, um, especially like on my concealed carry journey, is that, you know, the first holster you end up trying or the first couple times you start messing around with stuff, it's okay to be uncomfortable. It's okay to 100%. practice in your home. You know, yep. we're joking about like, you know, I would wear not sweatpants, but a pair of jeans around the house with an empty holster and then put the pistol in and just, you know, it can be empty. It's, it's that getting out of your comfort zone that, you know, it's going to feel a little weird at first and you might have to go up in your skinny jeans because they're not quite going to fit <laughs> that holster. You know, there's just different considerations for women over men. And I think sometimes it's hard um, you know, you guys can speak all day long to it too, but it's nice to have someone with a perspective that's actually like lived that and said, oh yes, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. That, you know, that blouse is totally not going to work when you're trying <laughs> to hide whatever pistol you're going to be carrying and things. So. No, absolutely. And, and like I kind of mentioned, I've, I've taught, I taught CCW classes for about three years and we'd have women uh, come all the time and I didn't have a good answer for them, um, you know, because I'm not a woman. So, um, but I think it was really cool having you here. Talk about that a little bit. So one thing you mentioned, Laura, was our, your journey, concealed carry journey. So um, talk about that a little bit. 
Okay. Um, so <laughs> my concealed carry journey um, started about five or six years ago. Um, I actually, actually, I've never really talked about this, but um, I had a stalking incident. I moved and for a new job, and I lived in a city where I wasn't familiar with, lived by myself most of my adult life. And, um, you know, I've, I've always had guns, been comfortable with guns, um, just wasn't, and I was in the state of Illinois. So for reference, for those of you who are in the state of Illinois, I know we have such a fun concealed carry course <laughs> we have to take. So um, it was kind of prohibitive for me because I thought, you know, it's got, I got to take the 16 hour class. You know, it's probably fine right now. I don't know. It just wasn't the forefront of my mind. Um, and then that occurred and I thought, you know what? I really need to invest in my safety and my future. Um, and it just really was kind of, I, I'm disappointed that it took that event to kind of spur me into doing it. But um, yeah, so that was kind of like where I started. And then, you know, from there, just started taking different training courses. I'm blessed because I've been in this outdoor industry and firearm industry. So I've gotten a lot of neat opportunities that, you know, most women maybe wouldn't get. So, um, and just kind of built training from there and then just evolved. And as I've gotten to learn under some really cool instructors. Awesome. Well, that is, that's really cool. So we got the two Jessicas here or Jess and Jessica. So you guys aren't like high, high speed blow drag pistol shooters, but you guys do shoot. We, your group is about getting women in the outdoors, correct? Absolutely. So can you kind of talk about that similar to, you know, Laura's journey of concealed carry? About how do you how did you guys get in the outdoors? Uh, what's our goal with wilderness? All that. Yeah, so um, you know there are a lot of women who don't have the hunting or the fishing or the outdoor background, and you know we are certainly aiming to kind of incorporate those women. Um, we want to bring them into the fold, if you will, the kind of outdoor family. So that's our our main goal is getting women in, interested and involved in the outdoors. So we realize that the outdoors, there's um, a myriad of, of different activities that you can participate in. So um, we figure if we offer a welcoming and inclusive atmosphere um, for something that somebody, you know, has a little bit of interest in, once they are part of, you know, the family, the camaraderie that comes with these women's events, we can encourage them to try things that they might not otherwise consider. So, you know, for instance, today we, we had a woman never shot a gun before. She's ready to go on a hunting trip now. She's ready to buy her concealed carry gun and, and then buy a shotgun and, and join us on a duck hunt. So um, that's kind of our goal is, you know, by, by including them on a particular interest, we might broaden their interest. So, um, you know, I grew up in a family that hunted and fished. Um, but for me, shooting sports are very intimidating because that just wasn't the background that I came from. So classes like this are, are really important to me because it does broaden my knowledge base. And really our goal is to build these skills so that we don't have to depend on anybody else to teach them. So eventually once, you know, we have mastered these skills, we can offer these classes without necessarily having to reach out with, to somebody else to teach them and building outdoor competence is our, is our overall goal. And I would just add to that, you know, Laura mentioned that she had an unfortunate event that spurred her into this. What we want to give is a platform. We're giving kind of, of a safe and simulated and welcoming environment to women so they can get involved in that. They, you know, it, it gives them a little initiative and a fun controlled environment to start learning these things rather than, you know, like you said, you wish you would have done it earlier. Providing these, these events is just, um, Things we wish we had, Jess and I, when we were younger, to, to feel included. We weren't the little tomboy, you know, running behind our dad and hand-me-down pants that were three sizes too big. You know, it's it's really taking ownership and things we love and sharing that. And I think that's the biggest thing that, that came from wilderness is loving what, you know, we love in the outdoors and we really want to share that with people. So one of uh, my favorite analogies for, um, you know, learning, you know, being a woman in the outdoors is, I, I don't know if you guys have ever tried to teach your significant other how to drive a manual transmission yeah. vehicle, um, cause of divorces nationwide. Um, it's terrible. You're learning. It doesn't even have to be your significant other, you know, just somebody in your family it can be extremely frustrating. So providing an environment where women can come and learn from somebody who, you know, is a little less short tempered than, you know, the husband at home or the dad the at dad, home. Yeah. Um, we really, we really want to try and, and involve women on that level. Absolutely. No, that's cool. And, Actually, my wife's here at this course, and she did really well. I tried to let Matt and Laura work with her as much as possible. Um, I'm very fortunate. I taught my wife how to drive a stick, and I taught her how to shoot a shotgun. So. You guys are still married. Yeah, we're still that's married. Uh, you beat the stats. That's right. right. You know, well, one, you know, blind squirrel finds out every now and then. Now, she probably can't shoot very well because of that, but uh, we tried. 
No, um, we really had a good time, and uh, my wife spent some time in the outdoors, but she didn't shoot a lot, and so she really felt welcomed and enjoyed that, and um, it was really good to spend some time with you. So we were shooting some ammunition today. Mm-hmm. You want to talk about a little bit, Laura? Sure. So we brought Norma range and training ammo today. It's 9 mil. Um, it's just your basic run-of-the-mill um what you want to use for planking, target shooting, and stuff, and it ran through all the CZs really, really well. Um, we also brought our Norma MHP, which is our monolithic hollow point. Um, it's 9 mil as well, all the pistols today we were shooting. Um, for those of you listening, if we're still in the middle of 2020, I'm sorry about the 9 mil shortage. I can't do that. We're doing our best, so I'll throw that in there for a little bit. But um, And we sent all the ladies home with some MHP self-defense rounds, yeah. and um, it was fun today to kind of talk to them and not go super into detail on ballistics. I mean, these women are just learning basic pistol manipulation and things like that. But to talk about um, when the questions arose, you know, what should I be shooting for? Most of them were kind of in the either home defense or concealed carry category was kind of where they were spurring towards wanting to be the protector of the household or help the protector of the household was kind of the mentality. So it was cool to talk to them about, um, you know, modern day projectiles and how there are differences on what you're shooting, you know, range and training ammo, great for planking on steel targets. If you're going to shoot and run something in a concealed carry, you definitely want to practice with it um, and, you know, know different things and how your your gun is hitting. If it's going to, you know, Matt said it beautifully today, some guns are kind of picky or a little bit particular um, about yeah. about different things. So it was just kind of cool to have that grassroots conversation with them so that when they do go up to the gun counter, they're not going to be um, maybe as intimidated or know some of the questions to ask or um, sometimes as people like to go and we won't get in the nine mil versus 45 debate <laughs> on this podcast because no one wants to Come sit on. and listen to us that long. <laughs> but, um, you know, it was just anyone that's going to sit there and tell you, you have to run whatever certain cartridge. I mean, you need to run a gun that you can shoot well with and modern day technology and like with ballistics, things are still, you know, work very well. So. Awesome. Yeah, no, that's, um, and that's one thing I try to emphasize when I'm training or talking, you know, ballistics have come so far, even like in five years or in 10 years, you know, and um, as effective, you know, a lot of people didn't think 9mm had enough punch to be effective. And I, I love 9mm, it's one of my favorite calibers. And um, like you guys talked about today, you know, running the ammo that you're going to carry. Um, you don't want the first time you shot that ammo is when you pull your man and you need it, no. you know. Yeah. And we talked a lot today about uh, whether you should carry with a round in the chamber. Safeties on guns. Um, you know, I personally carry around in the chamber. I carry shark fire guns, so there's no external safety I have to turn off because when I'm pulling that gun, I want to be able to use it. You know, I need to. And uh, we talked about the different different scenarios and different options, and things that people like. And you know, I, I think the big overarching theme that we tried to emphasize and everyone talked about was try stuff. You got to go shoot different guns. You got to shoot different ammo. Try different calibers. And you know, even you know, listening to this is thinking about this. So the big thing I would say is if you buy a gun and you don't like shooting it. You're not going to practice with it. You're not going to carry exactly. it, and it's useless. So it's going to sit in a safe, yep. you know, um, at your house and not not help you. So and we we hope you buy a CZ and put a Bushnell red That's dot right. on it and run Norma ammunition <laughs> through it. But that might not be what works best for you, and so. Yeah. I, I think that's one of the, the, the tricks to any type of training event that you go to is that a lot of times you'll go to a facility or to an instructor and we're all humans, we're all creatures, we all have our biases. We all have a tendencies to kind of push or to explain things in ways that kind of fit us. So uh, what was great about this group today and having such a wide uh, variety of instructors as well as people that were there, you know, answering questions or putting the terms and stuff in, in more relatable ways um, we were all saying the same thing, but we were saying it in a way that was very understandable. It was uh, obviously acknowledged and they learned because the groups these ladies were shooting at the end of the day before when they start was just as you know, night and day. Uh, cleaning a, a Texas Star, which anybody has shot that, that's not easy. No matter when you're shooting it, <laughs> not to mention a gun you've never shot before in less than a couple hours, you feel confident yeah. enough to give that a try. So, um <clears throat> But yeah, I think I think you hit on Daniel is just uh, to try it all to get a good base knowledge of what's available, and then you know pick and choose where you want to go from there, and you probably won't get let down very many times 100%. if you look at it that way. 100%, you know, and I know you're uh, involved in USPSA. 
right? Yeah, so I've shot a little three gun, uh, shooting a little bit more USPSA now, and, and quite a bit of PRS. Um, they each bring their own unique sets and challenges. They are all very welcoming communities. It's one of the reasons why I've chosen to work in this industry for so long, because not only are the people uh, very accommodating, but when you go to some of these larger events where there'll be people of all skill levels, I've never been on a squad or shot with any group, not knowing any of them, that there wasn't somebody there that didn't uh, try to help me and make me advance or lend me a piece of gear or give me a suggestion. And I think, you know, that's that's a great sign and the reason why so many people are attracted, and, you know, to our community and want to get involved in hunting and shooting because once they do, they realize they're with a like-minded group of people that just want to have fun and they want to see each other advance. And while, yes, on those upper levels, it can be competitive. It can be, you know, a little cutthroat. But until you're at that level, it's just out there about being safe and having fun. Absolutely, man. You know, and I, I shoot a lot of sporting clays. And um, when I first started shooting, I was, uh, you know, upset with myself that missing some targets. And <laughs> One of the guys I was shooting with that's really good, he looks at me and he says, man, you're not good enough. You're going to get mad. And I was like, no. <laughs> he said it. He delivered it in a good way. Right. And it didn't hurt my ego too much. Advice. But, you know, it's true. Yeah. I think some people kind of work up in their mind um, these competitions. Or you're just shooting. There's no prize today, right? You right. Know, you gave away a cleaning kit at the end of it. That was totally random. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, let's take that pressure off ourselves. Just have some fun. Enjoy each other. And learn something, you know. And so. Be safe. <laughs> While you're doing Absolutely. It. Yeah, yeah. It was great. I, yeah, I agree with you completely. I think some of these courses you go to, and I think what a great environment that you guys have created with wilderness is that you can go and leave your ego at the door. I mean, these women are asking questions that um, I think everyone is teachable. And as Matt said, even shooting on some of the squads, how people will help you with tips. It's just refreshing to get to hang out in a group of people or be in an event where everyone is like striving to learn and asking questions or, you know, no question is a dumb question. It's really neat. Absolutely, you know, and, and that was a really cool environment, and I'm glad I got to be a part of it today. Well, thank you so well, much yeah. for coming, no, all of you guys. We we really couldn't do it without the support of industry partners because you know there's there's a lot that comes into recruiting individuals into the outdoors, and um, it can get a little expensive. You know, <laughs> um, we shot what we, a thousand rounds today. Um, so, you know, mm-hmm. putting that out of pocket can be a little intimidating. So it's, um, our success is only due to our, our industry partners, um, and people that are willing to support us and our mission. So we're really grateful for you guys coming out, donating your time, um, your commodities, all yeah, that good stuff. Good. Absolutely. Thank you, GA Pursuit and Range. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, no cost for us to do this. And so what did it cost per woman to come? Nothing, right? Yep. Zero yeah, dollars. Zero dollars. You know, we provide the, uh, CC provide the range guns and. Norway was awesome, provided the ammo. We got some red dots and instruction from Matt. So, and we had the range provided by GA. So that's, I think that's another thing is there's, there was no barrier really to entry to come here. Yep. Yeah. Um, and that's one thing that we do concentrate on at Wilderness. You know, we realize that there are a lot of opportunities for women to get involved in the outdoors. If $1,500 is an okay amount for you to spend on a Missouri turkey. To me, that's cost prohibitive. Absolutely. I don't want to participate in something that costs that kind of money just to find out I don't like it. Mm -hmm. So we never want cost to be a barrier to participation. So we offer our classes free to low cost. I mean, minimal cost just to cover our basics, you know, food and camping fees or anything like that. So. Yeah. So let's talk about what are some events you have coming up? Cause you guys are like every weekend, I feel like you're doing something awesome that I want to do. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So we have the rest of the year. It's actually pretty packed and we're super, super excited. We've got our cast and blast coming up. Uh, we're going to Glen Elder state park. Uh, we've got a sunflower field. We're going to do dove hunting. Um, a lot of people that sign up have never dove hunted. I've hunted my whole life and never hunted dove. So I'm personally super excited. And And that's going to be a really cool event because it's a mentored event. So, um, brand new hunters. It's a fantastic opportunity to come out and learn from some more experienced dove hunters. Yeah. And then we'll take off in the afternoon and do some fishing. Yeah, we're going to uh, camp. There's going to be a, a fork component. So field the fork. Yeah. Field the fork. So uh, hopefully we shoot a lot because I'm a big girl. And if we don't have <laughs> nothing to eat, I'm going to go home cranky. So um, we actually, uh, my favorite thing about the year now, I just started duck hunting with Jess last year. Oh, I am a duck addict now. It is taking yeah. a lot of my money and a lot of my time and <laughs> a lot of my girlfriend's patience. So um, we have, I think, three duck dates uh, tentatively scheduled. I know mm-hmm. two are definitely in the books. Yep. Um, we have an awesome, awesome opportunity. We had somebody donate um, quite a bit of money for us to put on a women's veteran hunt, a disabled veterans hunt. We're going to try and accommodate four to six women to do a disabled veterans hunt. Uh, We're going to do this up around Valley Falls. Valley Falls. Kansas, yep. Um, So we've got that in the books. We we actually have several women signed up for it. We've got them coming as far as Florida 
to attend this hunt. Yeah. So we're going to cover the cost of their tags, um, licenses, hotel, and meals the day of the hunt. Um, hopefully get them on a Kansas dough. We've also got a couple of education mm -hmm. courses coming up. Um, boater education is next Friday. So um, yeah. that'll, you know, suffice all the uh, requirements to vote on any public Kansas waters. And then one that I'm particularly excited about um, is the fur harvester education. Yeah. You know, trapping is something that is, is sort of a lost art um, for a lot of people anymore. You know, they tend to be those old school, good old boys that are doing the trapping. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a ladies only fur harvester education followed by an advanced course where we're actually going to go set trap lines, check them, dispatch animals and learn how to, you know, process the furs for sale even. So it's going to be, we have a lot of opportunities to learn a whole bunch of diverse activities. Mm -hmm. Man, that is awesome. Like I said, I want to go to these. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. Me and Mag just started our own group. Yeah. 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 Uh, we'll start well, Hymnist. Yeah. Well, hymnist. Yeah. Yeah. So, I didn't have a good ringtone. Uh, <laughs> not as good as Wilderness. No. Yeah. So where can we find out about this online? Like Wilderness.org, our yeah. website. Um, we're also on Facebook, but um, events go live on our on our website first. So wilderness.org, and that's wildherness.org. Perfect. So they can support them. They can find out about events and... Um, Awesome stuff happening the rest of the year. Uh, CZ-USA.com. You can find about CZUSA products. Bushmill.com. Uh, we've got seven sites that we've linked together. So uh, really kind of surround the shooter other than firearms and ammo itself. So if you're looking for gun cleaner targets, accessories, optics, uh, just go over to Bushmill.com and you can see some of our sister brands uh, underneath Vista. But uh, a lot of great options uh, to pair with. Uh, a lot of great products that are Awesome. Laura? Yep. And we have NormaAmmunition.com. So uh, <laughs> anything ballistically you want to know or in-depth details or for any of my reloading nerds out there, we've got tons of data <laughs> just to satisfy your, your curiosity and interest. So We, we have a reloading we nerd on the team. So. <laughs> yeah, you guys are crazy awesome. Uh, just people you guys have access to and all the things you're doing. So I'm really impressed and we're glad that we could do this. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, yeah. Thank you guys so much. You guys made this day happen. And, and we spoke to some of the girls before we did this podcast. And I said, what could we have done to make you more comfortable, make it more, feel more inclusive? And three of the ladies said absolutely nothing. That they've been to other places where it is intimidating. The guys are kind of know-it-alls. They're critiquing every move. They, You know, and... and that's absolutely, I think, I don't think any female has done anything outdoors where they haven't experienced absolutely. that. Sure. So I think you guys, all three of you, just hit the nail on the head. Today, absolutely. I don't think could have gone any better. Agreed. So, Love unless the CZs were in my candy bags. You know, <laughs> just, well, the door well, prizes. Matter, my red dots off my face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those may have to be going home. Yeah. yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be accountable for those. So yeah. I'm going to pull those before You want those back before we leave, yeah. so. Good call. Um, before I, I'm about to jump in a car and go to South Carolina and hunt some some deer with a bow. Jealous. So, nice. Yeah. Right? So Keep it's going to be updated. a good time. Yeah. So luckily, hunting season is starting. Thank God. So which I know is exciting for all you guys too. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's going to be a good time. Well, wilderness.com. <laughs> Wilderness.org. Dot org. Sorry. Wilderness.org. Cz-usa.com. Bushnell.com. Normaambition.com. Awesome. Thank you guys, and we'll talk to you later.